Hello everyone and welcome! In this video I'm going to be answering your questions about the Bloodhound SSC. Now I posted on my Facebook page letting you guys know that I was going to be talking with an engineer for the Bloodhound project and you guys posted plenty of questions. So I took those questions and went to Mark Elvin who is the lead engineer for the Bloodhound project. He's also a former F1 engineer for Williams and tried to get answers for some of these questions. So I think this is a really cool project. Uh, I thought it was cool, you know, because not only are they trying to kind of push the boundaries of what is possible, but you know, it's not just some project that's trying to earn profit. It's not like most of the engineering projects out there. So I think it's inspiring. I think it's cool. It gets you passionate about engineering. And so let's dive into some of these questions. So the first question, how much horsepower is needed to reach a thousand miles per hour? Well, the Bloodhound SSC produces the equivalent of about 135,000 horsepower, which is about 180 F1 cars, or about 1,000 of my Acura Integras. The next question, how much does the vehicle weigh? It weighs 7.5 metric tons fully fueled, or about 16,500 pounds. The next question, what are the wheels and tires made of, and how do you create a wheel or tire that travels at 1,000 miles per hour, and what RPM do they spin at? So there actually is no rubber like a traditional tire as this wouldn't work at these high speeds. So it's actually just a large aluminum alloy forging which is machined and the surface is forced flat. After machining it's balanced and spin tested, the wheels will rotate at 10,000 RPM meaning the outer edge will be subject to 50,000 radial Gs. How do you prevent the car from lifting? The overall shape is designed to minimize lift, though you can almost never eliminate it completely. You don't want upward facing features on the front, nor downward facing features on the rear as this will create lift. The design aims for one metric ton of lift between the front and rear axle, meaning the car will still have over six tons weighing it down. There are also winglets up front to adjust for lift. What measures will you take to ensure that the surface is ready to run on? The run will be completed in the Hackskeen Pan in South Africa. Now apparently for the past three years there's been a team of about 300 people working in the desert removing any stone larger than the size of a pea and they've already removed about 6,000 tons of stone. Now the surface floods between years so as it dries out gravity pulls the surface flat and you have a nice flat run to run the car on. What is the drag coefficient of this vehicle? The frontal area is 1.937 meters squared, and the vehicle has a CDA of 1.32. This makes the drag coefficient about 0.68, which is actually very good, all things considered. You have to remember that this thing has a giant intake for that turbine, and it also has to prevent lift at high speeds. And 0.68 is actually under some of the F1 cars out there, depending on their setup. How do you deal with vibrations at such high speeds, and what's the wheel-ground interaction like? The suspension used is a pull rod setup with double wishbones. It's nothing unconventional, but it's about five times as large as your typical suspension. Vibration of the wheels is minimized by balancing the wheels. The spinning of car parts is actually way more important than the surface. The run's going to be flat, and anything in the way is going to be smashed by the seven-ton car traveling at 1,000 miles per hour. What safety precautions and equipment are used to protect the driver? Everything about this vehicle was designed with safety as number one. All the components are stressed to aerospace levels, and Mark was confident that the safety of this vehicle was far higher than the average race car. Another interesting feature is the design of this hybrid rocket, because you can shut off the oxidizer flow to the rocket, and thus you kill the thrust. What are the maximum g-forces the driver feels? The maximum acceleration g-forces will be 2 g's when the NAMO rockets fire off. Now the maximum g-force overall will come from deceleration. This will be 3 g's and this occurs when the rockets are shut off after reaching 1,000 miles per hour. Next question, is there any thermal expansion of components to be concerned with and how do you compensate for this? This is actually a bit surprising because the wheel bearings actually don't run long enough to generate enough heat to fail and the air running over the body isn't running long enough that it's much of a concern. Actually radiated heat from the sun is more of a concern than this. However, when you do stop, all of the components of the car are warm. Once the car is stopped, fans will be used to pump air through the vehicle to prevent components from getting too hot. Now, as far as the heat from the wheels and the wear of the aluminum wheels on the ground, this is a bit unknown. They know that the wheels won't accelerate as fast as the car does and will have a little bit of drag, so heat could be an issue here and it will be a learning experience having these wheels running across the desert at 1,000 miles per hour. What are some of the things you'll have to take into consideration which the normal human won't think about when creating a vehicle that travels a thousand miles per hour? One of the first things is the speed of the air going into the jet. 
Jets like to breathe slower air, so this could cause a problem. What actually happens is the cockpit actually generates a shock wave, and as the air travels over this cockpit and enters this shock wave, it slows the air down to a speed that the turbine engine actually prefers. Another thing you have to take into consideration for this gas turbine is that these are typically operating at very high elevations where the air is very thin. So you have to adjust it due to the fact that there's far more oxygen, the air is much thicker at sea level. The Bloodhound also has a 25 millimeter thick acrylic screen that the driver views out of, and this is in the event of a bird strike that it won't break. Another thing to pay attention to is that as you're reaching the speed of sound, airflow gets a bit crazy and tries to rip apart the car. Now you can use computational fluid dynamics to simulate this and make sure your stresses are in check so that the vehicle stays as is. So I asked Mark Elvin, the lead engineer for this project, how he got involved with this. And he said he was a member of the 1K Club and he sent off a message letting them know that he was interested in working on it. They told him to submit his CV and of course it didn't hurt that he had five years of experience for the Williams F1 team on his CV. So in two weeks he was working on the project. Now I'll include a link in the video description for the 1K Club. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.